what's going on everyone what i want to do in this video is a little bit of a nasdaq futures kind of review a little slash update right so this is going to be some training involved in this video there's going to be some strategy talk there's going to be some mindset talk so what we are looking at here nasdaq futures today is wednesday the day after the big holiday i hope everyone had a safe holiday but what we're looking at here nasdaq currently trading at 15350 now this is the five minute time frame this is what i call my big boy chart for those of you guys who are new to my channel maybe you guys are not in evolution traders you guys are not in the discord you kind of you know stumbled across this video have no idea as to the way that i trade it might be a little bit confusing to those of you guys who have followed me for a little bit you guys will kind of understand a little bit better but what we are looking at here is a five minute time frame now you can see this big green candle that we had right off of the new york session open here big big engulfing candle here kind of taking out all of that pre-market action one thing that i do want to focus on here this candle actually gets back above its linear regression channel it's over the 20 the 10 the 5 and the 200 day moving average so that alone should tell you what guys we should be thinking long if we can get some type of confirmation we need to be thinking to the long side so with that being said, five minutes after the bell, we get this first candle close here. What I would like to do here is put a price level line at this high wick. That price was 15341. Now, what am I looking for? What I'm looking for here is where is my next five minute supply zone? That next five minute supply zone is going to be my measured potential. What that means is I'm going to look to get in long on a confirmation candle over this opening range five minute candle and sell for profits into that supply zone. So let's kind of go through the chart and play out here. You can see here at 635 in the morning, we do in fact confirm this opening candle. So this is the opening candle. This is your entry candle here at 635. Now, a couple of you that are not familiar with the way that I trade may be thinking, well, where's gonna be our stop loss, right? Here's how I kind of implement my stop loss. My stop loss is not really based on a percentage loss or an exact dollar amount loss. Now, how I manage my risk is by, by, is by my sizing, okay? So a lot of times, I'll just use a general example. Let's say you take five mini contracts or 10 mini contracts and you kind of give yourself that hard $500 loss or $1,000 loss or whatever you want to set for yourself, 2%, 1%, half a percent, doesn't really matter. And then it hits your stop loss and then it continues to go in your favor. How many times has that happened, right? So for me, what I like to do is maybe size down and go micro contracts, right? Which is gonna be a smaller profit made, but it's also gonna be a smaller loss made just due to the fact that I don't have that hard stop under a certain percentage or a certain dollar amount. So how I play my stop loss is this. I'm gonna use one of two ways uh, to kind of identify a stop loss. This green line that you can see here, this green line here, 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 right, here, this is what's called the 5 SMA, okay? Now this blue line here, 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 this is the 10 SMA. So what I like to do is trail my stop with the 5 and the 10 SMA. So if my reason why I wanna enter the trade is here, my confirmation for entry candle is here, if we are trading above the five SMA, we are power trending. As long as we are above this five SMA, I will not get stopped out. Now, if we close below the five SMA, I'm going to then look how close are we to the 10, okay? And if we look to see how close we are to the 10, if I'm comfortable with assuming that risk, then I go ahead and give it to the 10. And if we get below the 10 SMA, normally I'm gonna stop out nine out of 10 times unless we got something concrete right under it, okay? So as long as we are trading over the five SMA, as long as we are trading over the 10 SMA and we have room to run, what does that mean? Our next supply zone is not till up here, which is this linear regression channel. So again, this is the reason why we want to enter the trade. This is our entry candle and we look to be selling into this supply zone guys if you guys are not following me on the discord check the discord go to the futures channel i uh, uh, posted up some futures trades there was just doing a little bit of scalping on this same type of strategy using this same kind of metric right using that five using that 10 seeing if we're over the 20 estimate are we below looking to scalp you know a few points here five points here 10 points here 15 points there 
I posted up my PL for the day in that future. You guys can go see if you want to see how much exactly I made. Also, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. It will definitely help this video get out to more traders. I feel like I'm getting a little bit of traction here with some of you futures traders. I've got a lot more information and education to kind of share with you guys, a lot more strategy building to share with you guys, but I need this video to get out to more people. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. With that being said, you're gonna see our next setup is here. Once we hit this supply zone here, I'm then gonna take top wicks, right? If this is our high of day, I'm gonna look for a period of consolidation. As long as we're over the five and 10 day moving average, which we are, we stayed in this zone, I'm gonna to look to get long again on the the breakout and i'm going to look to take profits two or three candle pushes higher so if i'm going to get long on this candle this would be a push higher this would be a push higher and this would be a push higher i would literally be taking profits on this run up before we actually broke down now if you want to get into one of the other strategies that i cheat here and that's trading below the 20 sma you can see here this is our first candle close below the 20 SMA, essentially all morning. We get the confirmation candle here. This is where you're gonna throw your money into this candle. Remember, we are throwing our money into power candles that are taking out confirmation candles below the 20 SMA, and we're gonna take profits into, which is the 50 EMA, and that's our next demand. So again, guys, it doesn't matter if it's the 50 EMA, it doesn't matter if it's a linear regression, it doesn't matter if it's a, a 50 uh, SMA, it doesn't matter if it's a 200, it does not matter which moving average it is, they are all significant. Again, if we're getting in below the 20, our next demand zone is the 50 EMA. I wanna be taking profits into that and cleaning up here because look at what happens once we ran into that demand zone, we got a short-term bounce. We did follow through to the 50 SMA here, we got a short-term bounce. Bounce. As we broke through the 50 SMA here, we came down into this 100 and this lower Bollinger Band, and what happened? We got a bounce. You can kind of see how this big boy chart starts to come into play and how easy you can start to manage your trade. There should never be a reason why any one person on any one trade is absolutely getting destroyed. Because for example, let's say you did get in long anywhere here, right? And we're closing below the 10 and you did not get out. That's your fault that you're losing more money. If you did not get out below the 20 SMA, that's your fault you're losing money. If you did not get out when we lost the 50 EMA, that is your fault you are break even and down red. If you did not get out below the 50 SMA, whose fault is it? It is your fault. This chart, technical analysis and price action will give you clear exits. It's up to you to be disciplined and be a smart trader and get out of the trade when you are a loser. We are all going to lose. We are only going to win 50, 60% of our trade, sometimes 40%, sometimes 80%. It's a numbers game of probabilities. You have to understand that you're not always going to be on the right side of the probability. Make sure you manage your risk first. If that means sizing down and playing a couple of micros instead of minis, then please do that. Again, if you're looking to get funded with a prop firm, I would definitely recommend to only trade micros until you build up that cushion, until you get funded, until you're very, very comfortable with that cushion that you have. If you guys are looking to get funded, I work with three amazing, amazing, amazing prop firms that are all very highly competitive and offering great, great deals. Those links are down in the description box below, and I'll see you guys all on the next video.